It's my pleasure to deliver the presentation in KVM Forum this year. My presentation is about Kumo KVM upgrade test. I will introduce Stable Gas ABI and in-place upgrade two features since they are related to Kumo KVM upgrade test. I'm Min Deng. I'm quality engineer from KVM QE team Red Hat. I'm responsible for Stable Gas ABI. It's my pleasure to deliver the presentation in KVM Forum this year. My presentation is about Kumo KVM upgrade test. I will introduce Stable Gas ABI and in-place upgrade two features since they are related to Kumo KVM upgrade test. I'm Min Deng. I'm quality engineer from KVM QE team Red Hat. I'm responsible for Stable Gas ABI, in-place upgrade, and some other features tests on both x86 and PPC. It's today's agenda. Let us talk about Stable Gas ABI first and then in-place upgrade. What's a Stable Gas ABI? Stable Gas ABI allows virtual machines to be presented with the same ABI across QMO QM upgrades. From QE's perspective, regarding it as a sub-feature of migration. When Kumo KVM is upgraded to a new version, some aspect of this platform may change as new hardware capabilities are added. You need to make sure that the two machines are actually compatible with each other. If you migrate a virtual machine initially started on an older Kumo KVM to a newer version of Kumo KVM, you need to make sure that the virtual machine is running well in the whole process. Stable Gas API is that hardware profile of virtual machine should not change when Kumo KVM is upgraded. Why we need it? This feature can help to avoid breaking down virtual machines and make sure every feature works well as expected after applying critical bug fix or security mitigation and etc. Besides that, it can help to support new features and new capabilities of existing features. How does machine type affect stable gas ABI test? This slide shows you machine types on different architectures. First, machine type helps to emulate different chipsets and related devices, such as PC and Q35 on x86. Architecture, we will talk about it very soon. Second, it provides stable gas ABI, which hardware remains the same regardless of changes in host software or hardware. How to know which machine types are supported on Kumo KVM? We have two ways. The first one, we are a simple command, we easily know all supported machine types on some Kumo KVM. Second, checking it from Kumo's source code also helps. Let us have a look at the picture. We can see the motion types on different architectures. PC and Q35. In this slide, let us take a close look at PC and Q35 motion types on x86 architecture. Kumar KVM supports two main variants of motion type for x86, PC and Q35. PC corresponds to Intel i440 FS chipset released in 1996. Q35 corresponds to Intel A2 Q35 chipset released in 2007. The PC motion type is considered legacy and does not support many modern features. Intel continues to push the new chipset Q35, which supports PCIe, AHCI, and other modern features. Although at this time of writing, upstream Kumo has not reached an agreement to remove new vision variants of PC motion type from long term, probably stable Linux distribution are moving to support Q35 only.
From a QE side, we pay more attention to include Q35 emotion type in the stable gas ABI test. As Q35 motion type is very important for virtual machines on X86, I'd like to give a short introduction about it. The Intel Q35 chipset consists of two primary components, the graphic memory controller hub and I.O. controller hub. The GMCH manages the data flow between the CPU interface, the system memory interface, the external graphic interface, and the I.O. controller through the direct meter interface. The ICH9 provides a multitude of I.O. related functions. There are new features are supported on Q35. The first PCIe, PCI Express, ProPro Component Interconnect Express. The second, Advanced Host Controller Interface, or AHCI, is a technical standard for an interface that enables software to communicate with serial other devices. The third, VLMMU Emulation, the virtual machine VLMMU is a general device in Q currently only in the Q35 35 platform supports virtual machine VLMMU. The fourth, CQ boot. Spells and OVMF, they are included in our test metrics, so I want to introduce them here. Spells. It's an open source legacy BIOS implementation, and currently virtual machines use it as default PC BIOS. Q1 QVM testing will focus on whether it can bootstrap guest correctly, as well as handle as expected boot orders passed from Q1 QVM command line. OVMF, UEFI for VMs on x86. It's called OVMF open virtual machine from wire, it comes from EDK2, which is the UEFI reference implementation. The unified extensional from wire interface is a specification that defines a software interface between an operating system and platform firmware. Our test metrics of stable guest ABI on X86 PC and spells and Q35 and spells and Q35 and OVMF. Upper layer products and stable guest AB test, ABI test. We should know which version of QMOQM or real has been integrated into the upper layer product clearly before we start the test. We can benefit from this kind of information and make the stable guest ABI test more accurate. I list Red Hat OpenStack, Red Hat OpenShift, and Red Hat virtualization with different nano versions. Each version has a corresponding real and QMOQVM version. We put them into the test metrics with high priorities. We pay close attention to the version of QMOQVM or real from upper layer products. Red Hat OpenShift support for mixed applications running on virtual machines and containers, previously known as container native virtualization. OpenShift is a feature for OpenShift container platform and is delivered, integrated, and managed by the OpenShift operator framework. OpenShift virtualization is an add-on to OpenShift container platform that allows users to run and manage virtual machine workloads alongside container workloads. It supports Linux and Windows guest application running on current and older version of this operating system can, can be modernized now and deployed and managed as first-class citizens using native Kubernetes tools built into the OpenShift platform. It adds new objects into the OpenShift container platform cluster while Kubernetes custom resources to enable virtualization tasks. Now migration is one of those tasks. Basically, the stable gas ABI test is aligned to up layer products, and we are here.
Generally speaking, we make the test strategy of Stable Gas ABI from four aspects. First, product lines is about hosted metrics, actually. It includes different real product lines as well as QMQM components. Second, we need to cover all supported features as well as new features and the new capabilities of existing features. Third, as the test resource is limited, it is not possible for us to test all variant machine types on our architectures, so we need to prioritize the test metrics. For example, the Q35 and the PC machine type on x86. We focus on Q35 much more. Finally, hardware on x86, we will cover stable gas ABI tests for both Inter and AMD host. Those hosts should be compatible with each other. On power, we need to cover stable gas ABI tests on different hosts too, such as from Power 8 to Power 9, Power 9 to Power 9, and Power 8 to Power 8. We have basic test principles for stable gas ABI as follows. Feature level migration and post copy will be covered. Only interaction of machine types will be tested between two different hosts with different QMQM installed. And also need to consider spells uh, or OVMF's priorities on different product lines. And it's a basic test workflow that demonstrates how to do a stable gas API test. The test workflow has been applied to all architectures. We have two different hosts and have QMQVM and spells and OVMF installed on those hosts. We run pinpoint migration with the machine type list supported one by one from source to destination hosts. The migration includes layer migration and post copy. And those machines, virtual machines, include both real guest and Windows guest. At the same time, we will run heavy workloads on those guests during the test. In-place upgrade. What's in-place upgrade? In-place upgrade is a way of upgrading a system to a new major release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux by replacing the existing operating system. The in-place upgrade tool is LibreUtility. QMQM related test on x86 and PPC64 LE and SV90X. In-place upgrade test will be performed on both VM and host. The reason why we need to do it on the host is because we need to make sure the QMQM component will be upgraded to the correct version and work normally later. Why we need this in place upgrade feature. There are customers who don't like to do deployment again for their product environment for some reasons. So Red Hat provides customers with a better way to solve it. I'd like to say that in-place upgrade is the final alternative before you have to reinstall your operating system. In-place upgrade is the recommended and supported way to migrate your system to next major version for real. After doing in-place upgrade, the existing old operating system is replaced by a new version, but the user's configuration and the user data will be reserved well. It's one of the advantages of this feature. We will talk more about these features or advantages in the next slide. Why we choose in-place upgrade? Compared with redeployment, in-place upgrade has the following advantages. First, you can preserve your old configuration on your machine. If you redeploy it, our configuration will be removed. Second, it can help you to bypass the subscription management. If you redeploy it, your machines have to be subscribed. Third, with the lib tool, it only takes less than an hour and then you can have your machine upgraded if everything is going well. But if you redeploy it, 
it takes much more time since you need to install the OS, install the applications, and configure everything required on the machine. It's additional time and cost. Finally, it's not complicated for you to use Lib, so you don't need to be an expert. In this slide, let us talk about upgrade paths. For now, we have two upgrade paths. First, from real 7 to real 8. Second, from real 8 to real 9. The current strategy is provide an in-place upgrade from the latest release of the South system. For example, real 7.9 to either of the latest two even numbered minor releases of the next major version of real. If you are on an early real minor release with US, you can update the system to the latest minor version. Use either the YAP update or DNF update command, and then perform the in-place upgrade to the next major release of real. I want to highlight this. It's not supported for you to perform an in-place upgrade directly from real 7 to real 9. However, you can perform an in-place upgrade from real 7 to real 8 and then perform a second in-place upgrade to real 9. These slides show how to perform in-place upgrade. First of all, the real content should be ready on Red Hat Content Deliver Network or Red Hat Satellite, and then register the system by Red Hat Subscription Management, or without RHSM. But you need to prepare a repo file on your own if you choose this way, such as locally mirrored repos or mounted real installation ISO or HTTP hosted repos and then using YAM and, and DNF update your system to the corresponding real version, and then run lib, run pre-upgrade first, and then run the upgrade command. If everything goes per perfectly, the new upgraded system will be available after less than an hour. About new system, it can be a virtual machine or a host, as I mentioned in the upgrade pass slide. From QE side, we need to do the post upgrading test. It's another test story. This slide, uh, we will talk about in place upgrade with or without IHSM. First of all, please allow me to introduce a bit of IHSM. Red Hat Subscription Management is a customer-driven end-to-end solution that provides tools for subscription status and management and integrates with Red Hat system management tools. When customers purchase a subscription to a product, IHSM checks which system in customers' inventory are registered to the subscription. Registered systems are entitled to support services as well as errata, patches, and upgrades from the content delivery network. As a customer Red Hat, you have access to update and acknowledge for Red Hat products like Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The access to those products is provided by a subscription to purchase a subscription, you procure a SKU, which ties the subscription to an entitled quantity and price. In place upgrade with IHSM, honestly, it's almost the same to customer scenario. We have three stages. The first, register your system to servers. Second, enable the real content. The third, install lib tool and then run it. Register your system by these commands. These commands help you set server information and the SKU should be attached to the user you log in with. So your system can fetch the real content from the server. As I said in the previous slide, which ties the subscription to an entitlement. We need to enable real content. According to your account information, 
you will have the opportunity to, to get the poor ID and then attach your system to that pool so you can enable the real content. After you enable the real content, so you can update your system to the latest supported manual version and then perform the upgrade later. Install LibTool and run pre-upgrade first, and then you can get a pre-upgrade report by which you can know if there's any issues on your system before you really perform in-place upgrade. Please fix all the issues on the system by following the instructions from the pre-upgrade report. Run the upgrade command and just need to wait for the leap tool to upgrade your system automatically less than an hour or even much earlier. Let us check the results. Finally, log into your system and you will get a new upgraded system but all configuration have been resolved. From QE's perspective, it's not a single test because for us, we need to integrate multiple components, components and services together, and then we can perform it. But on another level, as a customer of Red Hat, it's a very friendly solution for them. Reference Q&A time. Thanks for listening.